Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is Earth being orbited by like a hundred different moons that are about to collide with one another. In today's video, we're going to be using Universe Sandbox to try to create our own solar system, but it's going to be a solar system with a twist that will teach you a little bit about, um, biology, I guess? You'll find out. Anyway, if you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe, because there's so many more educational videos coming in the future, and I think I've just destroyed Earth. My apologies. Welcome to What The Math. So what exactly am I talking about? So one of the most requested videos for some reason is for me to create my own system. But I am not particularly creative when it comes to, you know, being creative. And so I decided I'm just going to do something a little bit different. In one of the previous videos, what I did is actually create a system that had not uh, one, not two, but actually several different objects orbiting around Earth, and those objects were representations of um, biomass, ecological biomass from our planet Earth. What am I talking about? Well, let me just explain to you. Let's actually create a completely new simulation here, and what we're going to do in, uh, what we're going to add in the center is add a very large rock, uh, which actually should technically be composed of completely of organic, so it's going to be a big green rock, that represents all of the bacterial mass from our planet Earth. Now this is essentially if you were to take all of the bacteria from our planet and to squeeze them all into this one big beautiful green thing that you see in front of you. Now, how big would that be? Well, first of all, it would be quite massive. It's about 1.6 or almost 1.7 times 10 to the power of 15 kilograms, which is basically 1.6 and then 15 zeros. So it's a very, very massive rock. And um, this is what would happen if you combine all of the bacteria into one. But obviously, this would also create a space body if you were to do this. It would actually be um, larger than Halley's Comet. It would uh, be quite big. And um, here the size is, the radius is about 9.7 kilometers. So it's actually relatively large. Obviously not as big as, say, Pluto. Not as big as Pluto, but still big. And it does have gravity, as you can see. It has surface gravity um, and obviously has all of the parameters of an actual body. So what we're going to do next is we're going to place things orbiting around this particular um, rock just to show you how big and how small things actually are um, in uh, on our planet Earth. So bacteria are the largest. This is the largest biomass on our planet, but there are other ones that are quite big. The next on the list is plankton, and plankton is a little bit smaller. It's only about uh, one followed by 12 zeros, so it's about a thousand times lighter than, um, than bacteria. And my bacteria is actually flying away because plankton um, gravitationally influenced it. But let's actually just go into actions and stop it. And this guy right here is going to orbit around it. Uh, so there is our bacteria, and as you can see, they actually start orbiting around one another because if we were to combine all of the plankton and all of the bacteria, they would actually create relatively massive bodies. So these are some solid asteroids out here. Um, and then we have some other stuff. So th this is already sort of the biggest you'll get. So plankton, as you can see, is much, much smaller. Although if I were to change this to carbon, it would be a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger. All right, and now we're going to talk about other things, obviously other life that is on um, on our planet. Now, just as large as plankton, or possibly even larger than plankton, because we're not entirely sure how big this actually is, are the fish. Now, fish uh, represent quite a lot of biomass on our planet. Obviously not as much as bacteria, but uh, because there's so many different types of fish, and because a lot of fish lives deep in the water where we don't really see it, uh, we know that uh, there's anywhere between this much, same as plankton, or possibly even more. So I decided to give fish a little bit more mass here just to make it a little bit more interesting. So we have bacteria in the middle, this is our main body, and then we have plankton orbiting around it, and also fish. And now we come into the terrestrial animals. There's actually quite a lot of different things here that we can think about, uh, but the ones I'm going to mention are the ones that represent the highest mass. And the first one is, I don't know if you, you want to try to guess what it is? Try to guess. Guess what this is going to be. And it is the cattle. So, you know, cows, sheep, that kind of stuff. I may actually want to change this to carbon as well, 
just to make it just a little bit bigger. But the size of all of the cattle, if you were to squeeze it into one big bowl, would be about uh, 600 or almost 700 uh, meters in radius. So not particularly large, but also not particularly small either. So this is all of your cows squished into one big burger. And my apologies if you're, if you're a vegetarian and if you're watching this. Anyway, moving on, and right after cattle, surprisingly, is something that's really, really, really small. And I actually decided to add two at the same time. Uh, so the first one here is termites. There is uh, quite a lot of termites, 4.5 times 10 to the power of 11 termites, and uh, quite a lot of ants as well. But they are actually different creatures, even though they look very similar. Uh, they do come separately, but termites and ants uh, are a very, very, very big, very large biomass on our planet Earth. And then, of course, we come to the humans. So this is the human bowl. If you were to combine everyone you know and everyone basically that looks human-like on our planet, this is what you would get. You would get a green bowl, or I guess it would be a more reddish bowl because of all the blood, uh, of about 609 uh, meters in radius. It's about 3.5 times 10 to the 11th power um, kilograms. And it has two little bowls orbiting around it. These are our friends, our friends, cats, and dogs. I decided to put them in here as well because they represent a relatively large biomass as well. There's uh, close to about uh, 500 million dogs in the world and they're actually relatively heavy. They're uh, on average about 20 kilograms and cats are usually about five kilograms on average but there's actually more of them than dogs and uh, there's something like 600 million cats in the world. There's a lot of cats. I think secretly cats are actually taking over the world. Um, so that's kind of uh, the major parts I wanted to add. I didn't really add any plants here. I didn't really add um, things like chickens and sheep and goats um, or whales that used to be a very large biomass, but then they're not anymore because we actually kind of unfortunately killed them. Um, but we can actually now compare all of this if we look at the chart and you can kind of see that this is right here is the, this is the bacteria. And then you have uh, the fish the um, plankton, cattle, termites, and humans, and then cats and dogs. So this is what uh, most of the biomass is uh, like uh, in our sort of, uh, on our planet and in, in our system. And just to help you visualize all of this, I actually just enabled uh, steaming here for a second. And also here are the orbits of all of the, uh, all of the major biomass representations in our, um, on our planet. And look at that. I think cats are actually staying with the humans, whereas the dogs are flying away. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Dogs, you're supposed to be the best friends. Why are you leaving the humans? Looks like cats are going to be sticking around with the humans. Uh, but this is essentially the system that I've created. And this is a system that represents the biological biomass on our planet Earth. Now, obviously, these are all just uh, rocks in space. These are just or organic carbon-based rocks that are not really asteroids. They're not, uh, they're not real. Uh, so, you know, you have to actually squeeze in every single human being to create this, which would be very, very difficult. But in comparison to our planet Earth, this is actually very, very, very tiny. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to place planet Earth right here. And it's going to be, this is how small they are actually, and it's, uh, all of these things are going to fall back to our planet Earth, and they're going to basically uh, populate Earth with life as we know it. So let's do this, let's place Earth right here on, oh my god, I just destroyed Earth. <laughs> that was not exactly what I wanted to do. I think this was going a little bit too fast, so what happened was all of my little rocks, all my little asteroids crashed back on our planet Earth and basically destroyed it. Well, that didn't work out as I planned, but you know what? That's basically the fun part about Universe Sandbox 2, because you can actually create and destroy as you please. But anyway, I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope now you know what it would look like if you were to take all of the life from our Earth, uh, from our planet Earth, and to squeeze it into little balls and then have those balls orbit around one another. And obviously, they would actually have their own uh, gravity field, because each one of them would be a very, very massive rock as well. And right before we finish this video, let's actually once again take a look at the human bowl. So this is all of the humans together in one little bowl that is orbiting around our beautiful planet Earth. If you were to take everyone on the planet, you would squeeze them into this bowl and you would get that. This is how tiny it actually is. This is how insignificant we are in comparison to our planet Earth. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who you think might learn something from this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. Bye bye.
And in the meanwhile, let's actually stop the humans once again and crash them back onto the planet as if this was an actual asteroid that's about 600 meters in radius. And look at that, look at that tiny explosion. Oh, humans, you did a lot more damage just by being alive on the planet than, than this asteroid. And look at this huge, huge field we've created. I've actually destroyed a very, very large part of Indian Ocean just by crashing every single life uh, source, life biomass back to the planet Earth. I'm sorry, Earth. I'm sorry. <laughs>